hey guys welcome back everybody hope you all are doing great guys today in this video we will talk about network troubleshooting in switching environment and this is my scenario as you can see in my scenario there are two pcs pc1 and pc2 pc1 is in vlan 10 and pc2 is in vlan 20 both the pcs are connected with one access layer switch then my access layer switch is connected with multi layer switch and finally we have one server here which is connected with multi layer switch and the server has one ip address 100.1.1.1 the pc1 which is in vlan 10 is using ip address from vlan 10 subnet and for vlan 10 we have this subnet for vlan 10 my subnet is 192.168.10.0/24 for vlan 20 my subnet is 192.168.20.0/24 so you can see pc1 is using one ip address has one ip address from vlan 10 subnet which is 192.168.10.1 similarly pc2 has one ip address from vlan 20 subnet which is 192.168.20.1 after that on the multi layer switch we have svi for both the vlan you can see svi for vlan 10 has one IP address 192.168.10.100 and SVI for VLAN 20 has one IP address 192.168.20.100 right so this IP address 10.100 will be the gateway for VLAN 10 users and 20.100 will be the gateway for VLAN 20 users after configuring this scenario there is some issue what is the issue issue is these users pcs are not able to access my server right 100.1.1.1 for an example this is my web server or dscp server if this is dscp server then client machines are not able to get ip address from the dscp server if this is the web server client machines are not able to access the application or the website even these two pcs are not able to communicate with each other right vlan 10 users are able to communicate with each other if we have multiple users in vlan 10 so they all are able to communicate but vlan 10 users are not able to communicate with vlan 20 users even these users vlan 10 and 20 users are not able to ping their gateway that means guys what that means there is some issue on the access layer switch or maybe on the distribution layer switch because you know whenever a client machine a pc is going to communicate with a device which belongs to different subnet then gateway is required and um, there must be reachability between the client machine and gateway if vlan 10 users are not able to ping the gateway they can not forward traffic to different subnet they can definitely communicate with other devices which belongs to same subnet right so to come make communication between the network or between the subnet we need default gateway and there should be reachability that means there is some issue on this access layer switch or maybe on the distribution layer switch let's start the troubleshooting first of all guys i'm going to verify the issue let me access pc1 here in front of you and on the pc1 let me check the ip address first let me open the cmd and here I am going to run command IP config. So here is the IP config of device. You can see the IP address of this machine is 192.168.10.10. Right? Okay, no problem because this IP address also belongs to VLAN 10 submit only. 192.168.10.10. So here another IP address is dot one or dot ten doesn't matter the default gateway ip address is 192.168.10.1 no the default gateway ip address is incorrect actually we have the dhcp server here dhcp service is enabled on the on this uh, particular server and uh, these client machines should get ip address from the dhcp right right now you can see the default gateway ip address is incorrect on the machine default gateway ip address should be 192.168.10.100 if i will try to ping the default gateway IP address which is 192.168.10.100 so you can see ping is working or not let me show you ping 192.168.10.100 
ping is not working here you can see i am not able to ping the gateway ip address right even if this machine has incorrect gateway ip address then also 192.160.10.100 should be reachable from here right from the pc it is getting request timeout error this is the issue of your access layer switch or maybe your distribution layer switch right you can do one thing you can access your distribution layer switch and you can verify the ip on your svi interface and so ip interface brief exclude unassigned let me show you the ip on vlan 10 interface you can see vlan 10 interface has ip 192.168.10.100 and their status is up their line protocol is even up so at least this ip address should be reachable from pc number one if there is no any issue on the access layer switch but if pc one is not able to ping this ip address definitely there is some issue on the access layer switch why if you are thinking profool default gateway ip address is incorrect that's why this default gateway ip address is not reachable no brother right this ip address 192.168.10.100 belongs to the same subnet right so default gateway is not required even here right even the ip address of pc1 is 192.168.10.10 right then also these two ip address should be reachable with each other even we have configured the wrong default gateway ip address because default gateway is not required both belongs to same subnet right when we are pinging or sending any traffic from the pc1 first thing that my machine will perform is it will check the destination belongs to same subnet or different subnet with the help of and operation if you don't know this process how this process is happening behind the scene you can let me know in the comment section definitely i will make one video on it right that when you are sending any traffic from the any networking device what first operation happen on the machine behind the scene right like how it checks that destination belongs to same network or different network actually it's very simple your machine is going to perform and operation with the help of configured CIDR or submit mask and it will identify the destination belongs to same network or different network. If the network ID of destination IP address and the network ID of their own IP address both are same that means destination is in same subnet. If both are different that means destination is in different subnet we know this right. In case if you don't know you can let me know I will make one detailed video on that. For, for now this two IP address should be reachable with each other but it is not working it is not reachable that means there is some issue on my access layer switch let me uh, try to do one thing here on the PC1 if I am going to ping my self IP address ping 192.168.10.10 you can see I am getting the reply right this is my on IP address 10.10 .10, self IP address okay but i am not able to ping the gateway ip address and even the gateway ip address is configured incorrectly why it is configured incorrectly because i think i have configured this manually but if this machine will get ip address from the dscp it will get the correct ip address let me open the ncpa.cpl and let me check the ip allocation method here the ip allocation method should be DSCP but you can see it is the manual configuration right manually we have defined the IP address submit mask and default gateway I am going to say obtain an IP address automatically from the DSCP server and let me see if it is able to get IP address from the DSCP server not getting IP address right IP config see still now machine don't have any IP address you can see my machine don't have any IP address why it's happening why this machine is not able to get IP address from the DSCP server definitely there is some issue on the access layer switch maybe it is not able to forward the DSCP discover message let's let's troubleshoot it we can verify one more thing here on the DSCP server the DSCP server has allocated any IP address or assigned any IP address to machine or not so IP DSCP binding you can check the binding table and you can see there is nothing right so it has not assigned any IP address till now let's access this access layer switch and let me see what you can verify on access layer switch you can check the MAC address table first of all like because whenever switch switch access layer switch will receive any frame from the PC it is going to learn the MAC address of PC on this particular interface on an e0 slash 2 
so we can verify that this machine is learning the MAC address on this interface or not of PC1 what is the MAC address of PC1 you can check that here is the MAC address the physical address IP config all the MAC address on my Ethernet interface is this one the physical address you can see five zero 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 three zero three zero 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 so let me see the MAC address table so MAC address table and here is the MAC address of my PC one you can see it is learning the MAC address in correct VLAN no problem at all here right so because this PC one is in correct VLAN VLAN 10 in the correct VLAN it is learning the MAC address of PC one dynamic method and interface great now one more thing here we should verify see you can see one thing switch switch access layer switch is learning the MAC address of both PC PC1 and PC2 PC1 MAC address on Ethernet 0 slash 1 in VLAN 10 great PC2 MAC address on uh, E0 slash 2 in VLAN 20 but there is no any entry in the MAC address table of access layer switch for the gateway IP address right for the gateway IP address means for the SVI for the SVI, right? There is no any entry for 192.168.10.100.220.100. Let me do one thing from here. This from the uh, access um, distrib uh, sorry multi layer switch. If I am going to ping any IP address in VLAN 10, submit 192.168.10. Uh, let's say five. Any IP address, it should forward traffic from the VLAN 10 interface, right? As we are VLAN 10. And here switch should learn the MAC address but you can see switch is not learning right that means guys there is some issue over here on this particular interface right switch this district access layer switch is not learning any MAC address on 0 slash 2 0 slash 0 interface question is why it is not learning let me check this interface is down what is the status of this interface so interface status and include e0 slash 0 okay so 0 slash 0 interface is showing connected interface is configured as trunk and the duplex is full auto okay like a status looks fine right here what about the other interfaces you can see this interface is configured as trunk no problem this interface should be trunk and all the VLAN VLAN 10 and 20 should be allowed over here let me check that as well that VLAN 10 and 20 are allowed or not here how you can check that so interface e0 slash 0 and um, or we can say so interface trunk so you can see one interface is configured as trunk which is e0 slash 0 and guys here is the issue encapsulation protocol is dot one q fine status is trunking native vlan is 10 one done issue is here you can see a lot vlan is none on the trunk link there is no any vlan a lot so here I think we need to allow VLAN 10 and 20 definitely we need to allow interface E0 slash 0 switch port trunk allow VLAN let me say 10 first and now if I am going to again take you to the PC PC and uh, if I will request for IP address to the DSCP server let me see that is able to get IP from the DSCP server or not now if it is getting okay method is DSCP only and let me check now IP config IP config now on the it is getting IP from the APIPA right let me request for IP address to the DSCP server again manually and then obtain IP address automatically and say okay okay and let me check the ip config now now guys you can see this machine got the actual ip address 192.160.10.1 and the gateway ip address is 192.160.10.100 the correct ip address now let me ping gateway ip address ping 192.168.10.100 and now i am getting reply message from the gateway now my gateway is reachable from vlan 10 user so what was the issue issue was 
here on the trunk link the vlan was not allowed right so either you can configure vlan 10 as a native vlan in that case also it will work but what about vlan 20 you have to allow vlan 20 as well right so let me take you to access layer switch and let me allow both the vlan and guys always keep in mind one thing if now you are going to allow vlan 20 here like this config t interface e0 slash 0 many people are doing this mistake in the production right in the company interface e0 slash 0 and switch port trunk allowed vlan and they are adding vlan like this vlan 20 what will happen now now you can see again your vlan 10 users cannot ping to the gateway you can see ping is not working because when you are going to run this command switch port trunk allow vlan 20 it will only allow vlan 20 it will remove the vlan 10 from the trunk link again you can verify do so interface trunk now you can see vlan 20 is only allowed vlan 10 is not allowed right so we should not run command like this we should say switch port we should say switch port trunk allowed vlan and then add which vlan vlan 10 i want to add vlan 10 over here now if you will check so interface trunk you can see vlan 10 and 20 both the vlans are allowed over here and now if i will ping again i'm ex expecting the reply and from pc number 2 as well from pc 2 let me try to check connectivity first let me assign the ip address on pc 2 properties ipv4 address and obtain ip address from the dscp automatically manually the gateway ip address was wrong okay and now here on the pc number two let me open the cmd and let me write command ip config and you can see this machine also got the correct ip address 192.160.20.1 from the dscp server and the gateway ip address is also correct let me ping the gateway ping 192.168.20.100 and i am expecting the reply and you can see i am getting the reply message right so now vlan 10 users and vlan 20 users both the all the users are able to get correct ip address correct submit mask and correct default gateway ip address from the dscp server now they can communicate with each other from pc number one if i am going to ping pc2 now ping 192.168.20.1 so you can see ping is working i am getting the reply message right and how ping is working guys what will be my packet flow packet flow will be like this right these two pc will communicate via multi-layer switch because both are in different subnet right so first they will forward traffic to gateway at layer two right and at layer 3 the traffic is for the destination device and now i am expecting that the client machines are able to ping the server as well let me take you to the pc1 on the pc1 i can again open the browser and i can ping ping 100.1.1.1 and you can see i am getting reply message now i can open any browser and i can access the website as well right let me open the browser and let me type the ip address 100.1.1.1 and i should have access of the application as well now it will work right so what was the issue in my scenario the issue was here you can see it is asking for the username and password that means i got the access of my website issue was here on the access layer switch trunk interface on the trunk interface of access layer switch the vlan was not allowed right so this was one very basic issue generally we face in the production which is allowed vlan right and this is how you can verify it and fix it hope this video was helpful for you and guys if you have learned something from this video please hit on like button if you have any question query concern if you want video on any other topic just let me know in the comment section but don't forget to share your feedback 
if you are looking for any course ccna ccn psd van fireball you can visit my website pmnetworking.in you can check when the batches are starting and you can enroll yourself thank you so much bye bye